proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Welcome to Furious Driving and today I'm back in my little lockup where the Rover 2000 lives. Now the last time you saw this car a week or so ago it was going disastrously long. There was a lake of petrol as big as Lake Tahoe and that was all to do with a incorrect or a previously used olive which I've now discovered is actually a crush washer not a reusable washer and that is why it was making a lot of mess on the floor. So this week I have been mail ordering stuff and there's basically two really good suppliers I can think of off the top of my head for buying P6 parts. One is Wins & Co over in East Grinstead and the other one is MGBD up in Birmingham. Both really good helpful guys who know their stuff very well. So as you saw last time from Wins, I got some uh, plastic pipe of the correct sort so I can replace the damaged pipe that was in the car already. Uh, this time though I've been up to Mark at MGBD and I've ordered a nice brand new brass olive which should make life a lot easier. But of course in true furious driving style I have bought the correct one except it's not the correct one. There are two sizes listed and as only 50p I should have brought one of each but I didn't. The, web the website said that the smaller one was only for use with the carburetor. Unfortunately that's also the same pipe at the other end down here at the fuel tap which means this one is too big. So thankfully Mark has got a new one in the post so Well, while I'm waiting, I've got the opportunity to finish a few other jobs which I hadn't realised I hadn't finished because I got bored and walked away, including tightening up or fitting bolts on the end of these engine mounts and putting the correct number of smaller bolts holding these down. So we've got a complete complement of things holding the engine in the engine bay, which is always a good thing. Done. Right, now next I need to put back the uh, air cleaner and there is a new filter in this box and this heat shield which is lurking down here on the floor filled with nuts and bolts which I'll have to find a new home for quickly. Uh, in the last video someone did ask why there's no air filter on the car and that is the simple reason that, um, ah, don't fall off. Access, it's really hard to get access to anything underneath this heat shield and air filter once it's all in place. As I demonstrate, there we go. That's just the heat shield there. Once that's there, you're looking at nothing but heat shield. Incidentally, that there is a ceramic coated uh, exhaust manifold. Uh, Zerkatech did that for me, oh, back 2010, I think. Yeah, that was fitted, or done, I should say, after we did the Beaujolais run, which is an event driving down through France. Is that the right size bolt? Yeah, it's not a washer for that. Um, you drive through France uh, when they release the new season bowl oh, Beaujolais wine um, and it used to be a race to be the first one to get there and get back with a new bottle. Now it's more of like a not timed but a lowest mileage treasure hunt kind of event over a couple of days which is actually really good fun and I did it with Classics Monthly magazine a couple of times and a really good time and so after they stopped doing it for the magazine I decided to take this car for the last time I did it which is huge fun, unfortunately, despite spending an absolute fortune going through the car to make sure it was absolutely faultless. Uh, driving out of um, Calais, the back box blew on the exhaust and um, it actually vibrated the exhaust system so badly that the exhaust manifold studs wore out the aluminium in the head. So when we're going back, I wound up having to take the engine out and have the, head, the uh, manifold studs helicoiled and get a new manifold because that cracked in half and was boiling the petrol in the carburetor. So I've got to go around a Formula One racetrack in this car at no more than 60 miles an hour because that was as fast as it would go. I've lost the bolts that hold Diggs heat shield in place, I feel. On the way back, we got as far as uh, the Euro tunnel and they have a policy that if your car doesn't start and won't drive itself on the train, it's not going on the train. So we got there early, sat there in the car park, wafting the engine with uh, our maps of France to try and cool it down enough to restart. Mrs. Furious didn't enjoy that trip that much, I don't think. Anyway, got it onto the train and it drove on at its own power, but so it would drive off again, we we're back under the bonnet again, wafting the exhaust with maps some more. Anyway, it turned out the guy in the car behind us was the managing director of Zerkatech, so I took his details and got this thing done when I got home. And it's actually made quite a big difference because unleaded petrol burns hotter than the old leaded stuff. So you, old cars will run warmer 
with no differences to their actual tuning or condition, which is interesting. Well, I think it is. The old filter was actually pretty disgusting, to be honest, so it's nice to have a lovely fresh one going in the car after quite a long gap. Oh, look at that. Fresh and nice and... Now this is one of the biggest faffs in motoring, putting this air filter back on, as to be said. Because <sighs> you basically can't put... Yeah, you have to take the entire thing off to take the cover off, if that makes sense. Incidentally, going back to that Beaujolais run trip, this carburetor might look new and shiny, and that's because it relatively is. Um, ahead of that trip, I had the carburetor uh, rebuilt by Berlin, who are the SU people. Unfortunately, it arrived, or got done, by my own bad planning, only a couple of days before we went on the trip, and I didn't have a chance to uh, get the thing re rope or tuned properly and it was making less than 40 horsepower I think on the trip and I actually had it remapped on a rolling road and it's 99 horsepower as standard and I think it was making about 90 horsepower still which is it doesn't sound a lot but it's a lot for the time now you know I always talk about these brilliant LED magnetic rechargeable lights from Draper bang on about them all the time but they are illuminating the entire garage with just two of them and the magnet is so strong that this one has just held on to a screw head that's sticking out the wall and it's able to sit there and light up the engine bay for me big enough, bright enough for you to see me chatting quite brightly it's actually really quite dark at this end of the garage so right let's have a quick look and refit with the correct washer not washer olive at last. So my plan is to quickly undo the end down here, snip off a clean end with the side cutters rather than the mangled end I've been messing around with, fit the new olive and tighten it all up and then we are done. Job is a good one. And hopefully we won't lose too many gallons of petrol this time. What could possibly go wrong? Oh and oh good, I've managed to drop the olive. Perfect. Okay, didn't go quite to plan after I dropped the olive and had petrol running while I was scurried around underneath the car trying to find it and I couldn't get it onto the end of the petrol pipe inside the car so I quickly had to cut a new section of pipe, fit the olive and then fit it all up and it worked absolutely fine. More haste, less speed as they say. But it's all in there now and thankfully, let's grab a light. As you can see, it is bone dry underneath there. So for once, things have gone well at the end. And also the way I've used a slightly shorter bit of pipe this time, it's holding it away from that uh, earth strap, which I haven't replaced yet, because as I say, it's got an Allen key on it now. But I have got a shiny new, fresh from Halfords, four whole pounds worth of earth strap, which might make a difference to this thing starting in the future. Might not make any difference at all, but you know, can't hurt. So I don't know if I'm making a difference in the engine bay, but I have now added a nice new earth strap here in the boot which will certainly make life a little bit easier. Right so I haven't changed the earth strap under the bonnet because even though I've got a nice shiny new one I didn't bring an allen key over I'd forgotten I'd used a uh, different bolt because it's a slightly tighter fit thanks to the new uh, engine mounts. I have put the new earth strap in the boot straight into life. Fantastic. Now I've also put in about six litres of water <laughs> because um, I've also put about six litres of water in because it's kind of evaporated out of the uh, engine over the last two years. I'll let this warm up, I'll run it outside, I'll have a quick check over, make sure the lights and everything are working and of course obviously the brakes work. Why are you not running car? So a quarter of a tank of petrol in it. Sounds quite nice actually, sounds quite smooth. Oh, let's get some air in. And perhaps we can take this for our first drive. So this hasn't been anywhere for a long, long time, basically since COVID. Parked up not long before COVID, because it was starting to feel heavy steering right, I think it was. We can maybe take it for a quick run around the block just to make sure everything's happy. 
So this car is 1972, so it's tax free and MOT free, but I have to ensure it is safe to drive myself. I'm responsible legally, bizarrely. Great to get an unqualified individual responsible for the safety of their vehicle. I think it's a good idea. I can't steer. Bloody hell, I literally cannot steer at all. Oh my God, that's so tight. No, I cannot turn this at all. Now, it should be heavy when it's parked, but I literally can't turn the wheel even a little bit. That is not good at all. I've got a flat tire. Let's double check I've got a flat tire. No, got air in that one. Which I knew, got air in that one, a little bit low, but it's all right. Well, it's all running very well. Watch out for the extremely dangerous metal fan just there. We've got a cooling fan on the front of it as well, so when it gets hot in traffic, that will kick in. So the problem is going to be either the idler box, which is a replacement, uh, or more likely the steering box just here, which can be adjusted. So I need to look that one up. I'm not going for a drive just yet because that is now so rock solid, it's insane. Well, at least I can drive back into the garage under its own power. It does feel nice and smooth. Uh, radio aerial. Oh god, I can almost turn the wheel, but oh my god, that's so heavy. That needs some serious adjustment. I'm kind of disappointed actually because I really was looking forward to taking this thing for a drive, um, but that's clearly not going to happen right now all the time uh, I can't steer the thing. Because what I've essentially got now is basically a train. Ideal if I've got a nice straight area to drive in, but unfortunately most roads I'm aware of have got turns. I might even need to turn the wheel to get out of this little car parking area. So generally speaking, this is a bad thing. Um, oh, by the way, I was given a huge amount of a, a Haynes manual, so almost any car I get hold of in the next, well, ever i've probably got a manual for it now which is great combined with a lot of the other ones over in the uh, roots garage right so i'm gonna have to call it a day as far as this video is concerned because i am not gonna be around tomorrow and i'm gonna be busy on monday and otherwise i would carry on filming and try and sort that steering out but as it is it's sort of getting a little bit late in the evening and that's not going to be going around any corners anytime soon however the next time you see this car i will be sorting out the steering box on it either myself or having it trailed off to a classic car garage to sort out because that is a serious problem which I've got to fix. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little update. Now the car is getting better every time and it's no longer pouring petrol on the floor, which is a wonderful thing. Right, see you next time. Like and subscribe, you know the drill. Take care everybody, goodbye.